After six months of the Flight Insight IFR ground school being live and hundreds of students taking mock exams and practice test questions, we've got a lot of good data on what is and isn't giving people trouble and can identify the five questions most often answered incorrectly during that time. There really aren't any surprises here. These are all among the hardest questions you'll see on the IFR exam, so let's dive into the questions in the Flight Insight test bank. Here's question one. Refer to figure 95, which OBS selection on the number one nav would center the CDI and change the ambiguity indication to two? Let's pull up the figure. We wanna look at number one on the left. If you haven't worked much with horizontal situation indicators in the cockpit, this will look a bit foreign and you may wanna review the basics of how they work. They combine the heading indicator and VOR essentially. We're on a 140 heading with an OBS selection of 350. The needle is deflected to the right, specifically two and a half dots. You have to look at it as if we're flying that 350 OBS course, and the flag is indicating from. Each dot is two degrees, so with two and a half dots, in order to get on the 350 radial, we'd have to correct to the right five degrees, so we're on the 345 radial. Being on that radial would center the needle, but the question asked what selection would center the needle with a two indication. We'd have a from indication still. 345 is the radial from the station. To fly inbound to the station, we'd need to fly its reciprocal, which is 345 minus 180 or 165. If you said 345 on this, just take a moment and understand the difference between a heading to fly the radial away from the station and a heading to fly the same radial inbound. If you said 175, it's probably because you understandably interpreted the needle as being deflected to the left since after all, it is left from our perspective looking at it right now. But you have to look at it from the perspective of if you were flying your selected OBS heading. Kinda tricky. Next question, refer to figure 242. How should the missed approach point be identified when executing the RNAV GPS runway 36 approach at Adams Field? So let's have a look at the plate. On a GPS approach without vertical guidance like this one, the missed approach point will always be a specific waypoint. You can find it on the profile view where the bold line ends. Here it's at runway 36, which will be a point in the GPS database. Now the point runway 36 isn't one of the answer choices, but choice A is saying somewhat the same thing. When we pass a waypoint, the GPS receiver will momentarily flip from to to from to show point passage. Choice B would be correct if it was a decision altitude like you'd have on an LPV type approach with vertical guidance and choice C, where timing is involved, isn't something you see on GPS approaches, but more like non-precision navid based approaches like a localizer or VOR. Next question, hold entries, everyone's favorite. Refer to figure 113. You receive this ATC clearance. Clear to the XYZ Vortac, hold north on the 360 radial left turns. What is the recommended procedure to enter the holding pattern? Here's how we teach holding entries at Flight Insight. Start with your heading indicator. Ours is pointing at 055 degrees. Place the holding fix in the middle, then draw the radial we're holding on. Ours is the 360 radial, which is here. We're making left turns, so let's draw the turn, the outbound leg and the inbound turn. Now we have a visualization of the pattern from our perspective of this heading. Hopefully this makes it visually clear that a teardrop is our best entry. Second to last one deals with wind. Yes, not all the questions on the IFR knowledge test deal with approaches and procedures. What causes surface winds to flow across the isobars at an angle rather than parallel to the isobars? Let's review the forces that cause wind. First, there's the pressure gradient force. Areas of equivalent pressure are connected by lines called isobars on a weather chart. Air from higher pressure isobars flows to areas with lower pressure, causing wind. This force works perpendicular to the isobars. The Coriolis force, that is the effect caused by the rotation of the planet to cause these winds to veer to the right in the northern hemisphere, now makes the wind flow parallel to the isobars. Close to the surface though, friction from terrain and buildings slows the wind down, which weakens the Coriolis force. Pressure gradient force hasn't changed, it's still there because the pressure differentials are there, but the wind slowing down weakens the effect of the Coriolis force. This causes the winds which were flowing parallel to the isobars to back inwards towards lower pressure at an angle to the isobars. So the answer is surface friction. Close to the surface, we expect winds to flow at an angle to the isobars. The final question deals with VOR service volumes. 
Assume VORs are not part of the minimum operational network. You're planning an IFR flight off established airways below 18,000 feet. If you use VOR navigation to define the route, the maximum distance between nav aids should be what? Let's take two VORs as an example. The Sheridan and Miles City VORs. These are just over 100 miles apart and aren't connected by an airway. The traditional service volume of VORs below 18,000 feet looks like this. Each is good for up to 40 miles away from the station. So if the VORs are 80 miles or less away from each other, we should be able to navigate an entire route between them. So this is our answer. And it's a figure you sort of just have to know. It gets a bit more complicated above 18,000 feet, but stick with that answer and you should be fine for the test. Note that we started this question referring to the minimum operational network. This is a new service volume requirement that it doesn't appear has been incorporated into the instrument ACS yet. So I might expect to see this question change a bit in the future. So that's your five most wanted on the instrument test. Try a practice IFR test today to see where you're at and enroll in our instrument ground school to make sure you're ready for the real thing.